Good morning. It's Friday, May 24th, 2019. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Fruit of the Spirit, Part 4, Joy. And our scripture is Galatians, Chapter 5. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. We're looking at the ninefold fruit of the Spirit, those qualities and characteristics which develop in people who have genuinely surrendered to following Christ. Today's focus is on the fruit of joy. As with the rest of Christian experience, with joy there's a problem with counterfeits. It comes in the form of almost, but not really. Looking at two pictures illustrates this. In the first picture, which is the typical one you'll get if you do a Google search for joy, we see a guy who's jumping over mountains. He is, if you'll pardon the woeful pun, on top of the world. This giddy, exhilarated jumper projects that some wonderful experience is his, and he's celebrating. This is not the kind of joy of which the Bible proclaims, although this kind of overwhelming happiness can be associated with genuine joy. The second picture, a baby's hand clutching the finger of a parent, is relationship that needs very little explanation. There's trust, dependence, and a bond that goes deeper than words. The first picture pretty much depends on how you feel because of what you have or circumstances. The second only depends on who you are. The Apostle Paul has these words to help us understand the difference here. Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of sin. Circumstances can change like the weather, a promotion on the job, winning a scholarship grant, Hurricanes that wipe out life savings and memories. A doctor's report that says get your affairs in order. Or getting served divorce papers. But joy, in the biblical sense, only knows change in the sense of deeper awareness. It's that growing sense that you are truly loved with an everlasting kindness. Jeremiah put it this way. Long ago the Lord said to Israel, I have loved you, my people, with an everlasting love. With unfailing love, I have drawn you to myself. This is the relationship that brings genuine joy. Not a momentary exhilaration or love affair with a new car, house, job, or circumstances that can fade and wither as all substitutes for God will produce? Again, listen to Paul's take on what being in the kingdom of God as a child of the king produces. Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of what we eat or drink, but of living a life of goodness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. A life lived in the fruit of the Holy Spirit is to be filled with God's goodness and God's peace and God's joy. None of that depends on your family tree, your financial portfolio, or what the world thinks of you. It all depends on His love. For you today, let the peace of Christ dwell in you today. Scripture finishes our devotional thought of producing kingdom fruit. Proverbs 11.30, the seeds of good deeds become a tree of life. And then Romans 12.8, if your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it's giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.